Welcome to Podnuts Daily, episode number 271. Today is the always prepared Latvi on the line with us. And uh, he's calling from the UK. His website is laptopreballing.co.uk. If you guys don't know what reballing is, you need to find out by going to Latvi's site. That's laptopreballing.co.uk. Hello, Latvi. Hello, Steve. Hello, Podnuts. Hello, all the listeners, all the followers. Everyone who likes Podnuts, even those who don't like Podnuts. Hello to uh, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I heard you had some technical difficulties before the show today, but thanks for making it go right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Always. You're used to it now, isn't you? Oh, gosh. I, I'm, I'm numb. I'm numb to it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you calling us from? The, your Samsung netbook? From the netbook. From the, uh, from the mighty netbook, you know. This, this thing helped me do so many things you know i uh, really i last last week actually um the it last week it it did so many things that um, it made me buy my car i just bought a car a second car last week what do you mean and, it made, what do you mean it made you buy your car i mean sorry it bought my car yeah it bought the car for me okay. i did everything with it i mean I, I used to say, remember in the last show, we talked and said, uh, you know, if you've got a laptop, then you should get a netbook, you know, on the side. Yeah. But I'm using the netbook more than the laptop. Than the, the laptop. Really? Find myself, yeah, it's so convenient, easy to use, light. It's there. It does the basics. Obviously, it's not going to do video editing. It's not going to do, you know, right. code, you processor, code right. stuff. But it does the basics, you know. It, um, I did... To, I I went online with it on eBay with it paid for it for the the, the car with it. Uh, it took me to the car because uh, it had a Google Earth on it. Um, and then um, uh, when I when I got the car, I had imagine I had to wait about three hours to have the car serviced. I mean, what are you gonna do in three hours? <laughs> I, luckily, I had the netbook with me, and those three hours were like what like twenty minutes. <laughs> So instead of sitting down, you know, the, doing boring stuff, looking at the mechanic doing his stuff, you know, yeah. it, it's, a, it's a brilliant thing, these, these netbooks. Um, I think people shouldn't look too, too down on them. I agree. I was, I was down on them for my first two netbooks. And then it just, it all clicked into place. I knew what I wanted yeah. to use it for. It fit that purpose. And I've been using it. And I, I love my netbook, but... I can't go cold turkey, man. I'm always going back to the MacBook. Not even, not even for like you know, like uh, video editing or things. Just, just internet browsing and stuff. I just every once in a while I want the netbook. I mean, I want the MacBook. So, but I, I switch them up. I switch them up. Yeah, I what? mean, look at it tonight. It saved us. If it wasn't for the netbook, we wouldn't be able to do the, the show today because right. the Mac one on the laptop is playing up. It actually records the fan as well as the sound that's coming from it. And the netbook, there you go, because it's silent, the fan rarely turns. Yeah. You don't, um, yeah, these things are great, netbooks. I mean, I think when they came out, uh, obviously they were kind of really slow, but now you've got the uh, Atom NM N450, I think. And I think that's uh, that made the difference between uh, back in the days when netbook came out, the first few days of netbooks and now, so it's, Couple things. I mean, the processor speed. It run Windows Seven, and I don't mind starter one bit. The screen resolutions are better. The keys are bigger. Yeah, they came a long way. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's really good. All right. So, what do you want to talk about today? What have you been up to? All right. Uh, so many things. Very busy. Very busy. Uh, working a lot. Um, I've actually. I, we were so loaded that uh, we stopped people from buying repairs from the site. Actually, we had to. To go and and care and stop people sending the full laptops, and we're only letting the motherboards being sent in at the moment because uh, we, we, I I I don't spend as much time, and I can do like you know four or five a day, where with laptops I can normally do two two maximum a day. So uh, the, the 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 workshop the is so loaded that we had to cancel. We had to stop uh, for at least two weeks now before I can finish what I've got. Um, uh, I mean, uh, it, it, this week was was the most busiest week ever. Uh, normally, I can I can finish them all in one week, and the clients will have them back in in the same week. But uh, this week, I walked in Monday, 
and I've seen a stack of boxes. I said, man. Um, so uh, unfortunately, um, so those customers who, who, who are waiting, who needs reballing, you, you got to wait. That's, that's so, what it is. So, so I'm how are you, you pulling this off? What, what's the, what's I, your secret? I'm working here? extra hours now. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm working I mean, how you get How are you getting all the business, Lafayette? What have you been doing? You know, the only thing I'm doing, like you guys said, AdWords. Nice. Nothing else. I'm not in any magazine or newspaper or a website and link exchange. AdWords. That's all. AdWords is, I, I you know, I, I'm going to, I always, you guys know I love AdWords. And people yeah. who have, do not have success with AdWords, you have to tweak it. It's something that needs to be tweaked if it's not working. It's not like you put up an ad, it doesn't work, and you do, you're done with AdWords forever. It's like it does work. You just have to tweak it to fit you. So you must have a good uh, camp AdWords campaign going. Yeah. I mean, um, first of all, really, um, the type of business I do are, you know, we have really almost no or very small margin of competitors. We don't have many competitors out there. So not many compete for the word for the keyword reballing. So almost every time you type reballing or laptop reballing, we're always there in the we get the you know that orange bar at the top, which is really good. Rather yeah. and then we also get the uh, one on the side uh, on Google results. Um, we used to put um, the no you know the laptop repairs, computer repairs. There's so much competition on those that the, the click. Per, per uh, the, the the price per click is is so high and you don't get really good results from that. So I had I had to narrow it down to specific keywords that I know the user is gonna type. So I put myself as the user, uh, put him to put him, put myself in his position and see what is he gonna type. His laptop powers on. There's no screen. The first thing he's gonna write is laptop blue lights on no screen. Uh, video chip problem, something like that. Right. Not just general normal keywords, which you're gonna see a lot of competition on. Um, so, uh, so I've, you know, when I started, I had tons and tons of keywords or anything I could think of, thinking it would get me more traffic. But I actually think that if you if you target a specific audience or a specific clients and specific keywords. Um, you're gonna get much more response because um, if you ta if you do, for example, um, computer repair, just computer repair, and someone in another city or is gonna click on it, and you're gonna he he and he might not be interested in the product that you're offering. So to, to I'll, target, I'll give you an example for the when I started the tech site builder kit, um, I had a list of keywords in there, and one of the keywords was computer parts. And though that that keyword computer parts got the most traffic, but the most traffic is not what you want in AdWords. You want the most targeted traffic because people were typing computer parts and they were finding computer repair businesses and computer repair businesses. They don't really specialize in computer parts. They specialize in computer repair. So that may not have been the best keyword to use because the people that were were we're clicking on these sites. They're going, oh, oh, I see this as a computer repair site, but I, I need to buy computer parts. So, yeah. Also, um, uh, I think also like you can even target specifically by even like the town name, the street name. You can write computer repair region street. You know, it might be. You know, the more specific it is, the the much more um, response you'll get. Well, the, um, well, that's true. But Lafi, I mean, the way the way I handle that is. I just I do a location based AdWords. I definitely don't do like uh, international. Yeah. Because if I'm doing computer repair, I don't want somebody from the UK calling me to get their computer fixed. So uh, w with AdWords, it's so easy. It's so easy. You just set a radius of um, how where you want your ad to show, and Google won't show your ad outside that location's radius. So I usually did like 10 or 20 miles from my shop, and that's how I did it. Yeah, yeah, you can you can definitely choose the uh, which area you want. You can even somehow you can choose even the age you want. Uh, people under sixteen, I've got that checked. Uh, I didn't. I said uh, don't get any any. Uh, I don't know how they manage though to find out how old is the user. Really, but, they, that's uh, an option on AdWords. Yeah, they give me. Um, do you want males and females, and do you want the age group? Do you want uh, like? Uh, 
uh, under 16, over 16. I ticked off uh, anyone under 18 shouldn't see my ads because obviously I want adults who are able to pay and everything. Right. Um, they they did give me the option to to to, uh, to target those. Um, but for me, for my business, it has to be nationwide because it's an online base, and uh, I've got to get as many as I can. Um, but uh, but for example, I don't type the the word I don't have in my Google AdWords. I don't have computer repair. I don't even have laptop repair because that's not really what we do. What we do is laptop rebowling. We don't do repairs online. Like you can't buy a DC socket repair from my website. You can't buy a screen change from online. You can only get one specific product. Yeah, service. so definitely don't use that keyword. But, no. but how many, I guess, how many people use the keyword reballing? I guess enough to keep you in business. Um, I, mean, I mean, how many people are typing that into Google? Um, the impressions are thousands and thousands. The impressions are thousands of impressions. The clicks I'm getting, I'm actually, uh, I'm limiting the clicks myself. I'm limiting it to about 10 clicks a day. And I'm giving it about, uh, if, they, if they really type laptop reballing, I give a high price. But if they type, uh, I think my computer has a problem, then I would give a really low price because it could relate to reballing or could not. So if it mm -hmm. ends up clicking on my, on my AdWords or my ad, you know, he, he might not be interested in what I offer, but at the end of the day, I haven't paid that too much for, for his click. It seems but like if, it seems like if they're not clicking reball, if they're not typing reball, ha hang on, Lafayette, there is a definite like squelching happening. Oh, I know what it is. You got to turn down your speakers a little bit. Can you oh, okay. turn them down as low as you can, but so you could still hear me? Okay, let me plug the earphones actually, so I can hear you. Is it better like this? Yeah, it's, it only happened when I'm talking, so yeah, that, that'll definitely handle it. That's fine. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay, cool. Yeah, that'll handle it. Thank you. Um, all right, here we go. Wait, let me see. What, what, what the hell was I saying? Hang on. But at the end of the day, I haven't paid that too much for, for his click. It seems, like if, it seems like if they're not clicking reball, if they're not typing reball, ha hang on, Laffy. There is okay. a, uh, that's where we left off, so let me just take it from there. It seems like if they're not click if they're not typing reballing into Google, which is super laser targeted to your site, if they're not typing that, then anything else that they type, it's much more broad. Like you said, my computer shows blue LEDs when I boot up and like if they're typing keywords like that, it may or may not be a reballing job. So, I mean, you get mon the money is in reballing. I mean, if they type that keyword, you got them, but anything else, it's probably tough to make an, a good AdWords campaign because you don't know if they need reballing or not based off what they say. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's true. Uh, but I still um, I still put that in my ad, but really give it the lowest um, right. uh, bid right. possible, just in case it's still it's still probably so, worth it. So what are you gonna do? Are you gonna hire more people, or are you just gonna uh, keep keep you know filtering how many people come in? Like, I mean, you got some potential here. You're turning away business. People would would love to have that problem. Yeah, I know, but uh, you see, in my kind of business, I I, um, I, I, I can't find really. Um, I'd love to have someone who can. Um, I've already to be in the, the truth is I've already trained uh, at least three persons in the last two years who were saying, "Oh, we will help you, you know, and we will do the rebounding with you," and then I ended up, you know, teaching them how to do it um, exactly like how I do it. And then in the end, either they turn away and they went and do their own thing, or they just they they it didn't turn out what they wanted. Right. It was uh, too stressful uh, because really it is very very stressful uh, repair. So um, at, at the end, uh, I've got um, enough people to take care of the uh, admin side, or to take care of the orders and the shipping and the parcels, and taking the laptops apart and putting them back together. But when it comes to doing the actual work, to removing the chip and replacing it, it's still only down to me. Hmm. They, yeah. um, if you have someone working for you, they don't want the responsibility because if it fails, because the other guys who I had, you know, you do get a lot of failures. I mean, we have an eighty percent success rate. So, out of let's say out of ten laptops, seven would work straight away. 
and three would fail. Hmm. And and somehow they don't feel comfortable with that failing, failing. Yeah, yeah um, I could see that. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, but uh, that's how it is. It's a uh, you know reballing is really. It, if you have a, a motherboard that needs reballing, um, it's a motherboard that is kind of needs to be chucked away because uh, the only other option it can have is a reflow. And if you want to keep reflowing every two weeks, then uh, that's fine for you. But uh, you only got one chance to reball it. If it's, if it's reballed and it worked from the first second, that's it. It's a permanent fix. But if it hasn't, then uh, it's, it's a permanent damage. It's either that or that. Right. Let's talk about your site because you uh, it looks like you uh, definitely upgraded it. When did you do this? It's and by the way, it's laptopreballing.co.uk. Check it out. Yeah, um, I did that myself about I think it's about three months ago. Do you did this yourself? It looks great. Yeah, yeah, I um, I did the design the, myself. It's one of those. Um, it's a flash site actually. Yeah. I, I know flash is not great and but uh, no, not, no. I needed it to be flash so it can be inter interactive and uh, there's future plans for using uh, flash to put more animation and stuff like that so because most of my users are not really text most of sorry most of my clients are you you know your average Joe or, or the wife at home right, right. and uh, I want to make as easy as possible to understand um, that's why it looks a little bit cartoonish because, um, do you find it easy to understand? Yeah, that's, I, I'm all about cartoonish for this purpose. I mean, that's the way the, <laughs> yeah. that's the way tech site builder is. It's, it's not, yeah, that's what it is. It needs to get, yeah, a, it needs letters. to get a certain job done. That's its purpose. So I think it definitely is a good site. Yeah. I don't like to put like too much text, like paragraphs and paragraphs of text, uh, because I personally don't like to go through those sites. Um, so, so yeah, I just made it kind of easy and interactive and, Good. um, uh, and, uh, yeah, it seems to work. So I'm, I'm getting work. So um, I think it seems to work and definitely the new site has given me much, much more awesome. business than the old one. I'm sorry. What did you just say there? Your video started here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, sorry about that. I was <laughs> clicking around. It's that's fine. It's great. I was I clicked on temporary versus reballing, and then that this video just started. Um, cool. So yeah, since you upgraded your site, is that helping your business? You think? Yeah, yeah. Since we changed the design, uh, we we had remember really old classic design, yeah, of just text and 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 JPEGs, and now we've changed the colors and uh, changed the flash. Um, it seems to work better. It, um, uh, yeah, we, uh, yeah, it, it definitely improved uh, the look of, of of our of our company, our business. Gotcha. All right, Lafi, what else you want to go over? Yeah, um, when it comes to to repairs, I wanted to talk about my second wife. <laughs> Your second wife. Yeah, my second wife. <laughs> uh, uh, repairs. My wife is. How, how are you going to tie? <laughs> How are you going to tie this together? <laughs> Imagine, yeah, reveal the biggest secrets on Podnet. Um, yeah, she's uh, she, her name is Pahuti. Mm -hmm. She was born in China. Okay. Um, it's actually a welding machine. It's an infrared machine. It's You're... not. It's not real. It's not white. <laughs> Do you real, uh... Did you really name it that? Yeah, yeah. No, it's no, the company is actually Pahuti. The model is, is Pahuti. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So I, what does Pahuti she's, do? She's like my wife. I have to take care of her. She takes care of me. <laughs> what, is it, what does it do? Yeah. Um, well, this thing is called a infrared uh, welder. Uh, if you go on Google, you can type um google images you can come up with some images about it um t a t a uh, sorry t eight seven zero a t eight yeah seven zero a okay wow look at that monstrosity yeah yeah well that thing is two years old this is one of the first models uh budget models that came out and was available 
to let you do rebounding on Xbox. Okay. And uh, this is what I got it. When it came out, it was really expensive. It was about uh, two thousand dollars two not, years that's, ago. That's actually not really expensive. Mm, for me at the time, you know, two thousand dollars, kind of. Um, well, yeah, I mean, but I'm just I'm looking at the thing and just knowing what it does. I, right. I know, I know, two thousand dollars is obviously a lot of money, but but still. Yeah. Well. Uh, okay, let me guess. One thousand pounds. Yeah, that was that was about one thousand four hundred pounds. So normally, normally two thousand dollars. How much is it now? Um, right now, it's actually half the price. It's about um, it's about uh, now you you can buy two for a thousand pounds. So now wow. you can buy two for a uh, two thousand bucks. Wow. They sell them in twos. They're so cheap that they sell them two times. Wow. That's great. Yeah, but um, this thing uh, basically it was my first, it was my Xbox um, reballing uh, machine. It was meant to be just for reballing to me to do, be able to do reballing because that's what the title said. It said sure. Xbox reballing, but it actually it does way more than that. And um, the tricks I was able to do with and the stuff I was able to do with was uh, was incredible. It works by using infrared okay. beams. So you can think of it as your soldering iron. It works like a soldering iron, except it uses infrared lights to melt the solder, but not melt anything else around it. It doesn't melt the plastics. It doesn't melt the motherboard. It only melts the solder. This is insane. I don't know how the hell you do this stuff. This is like, this, this seems like the most precise like science ever needed to to do this yeah and this is so easy to use you can't believe how easy it's actually for me it's easier than using the heat gun um or the smd uh station yeah. uh, you know the one steve talks about steve mm -hmm. D'Amico. yeah steve d should get one of these he's in the chat room he said holy crap this is awesome stuff <laughs> <laughs> all right He's he's got to get one of these. This this thing is incredible. Let me tell you the things I was be able to do it. Before I've had my uh, my heat gun, uh, my SMD heat gun station. Mm -hmm. You know the little gun thing where hot air comes from. Yes. Now that thing is great for soldering DC sockets and uh, soldering SMDs and capacitors and diodes because uh, diodes and caps and they all metal, so they don't uh, they are not affected by the heat. Okay. But how do you solder, for example, a processor socket? If you need to change a processor socket, it's made out of plastic. Right. The, the heat gun will melt it. Right. Now, this will allow you to do that. Uh, for example, you know sometimes uh, people uh, who are not experts or uh, who are not techs, and they try and take apart a laptop for the first time themselves. Mm-hmm without seeking professional help. Right. And then, for example, they uh, remove the uh, camera connector and then it comes off completely like the connector and the cable from the motherboard. The camera connector? Like the webcam? Yeah, or like a keyboard connector yeah, yeah, yeah. on the motherboard. Right. Now, to solder that back on, you can't do it with the heat gun. I mean, you can do it with a soldering iron, but that will take ages and it's not precise. Mm -hmm. But with this tool, with this machine, IR, IR welder, all you got to do is put flux on the motherboard bit where the, you need to solder it, a little bit of flux, just a little, and then place the broken uh, part on top of the connection, so where it's supposed to go. And then all you got to do is turn on the infrared lamp and then... That's it. You let it for about 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and then you can monitor the temperature and then it will automatically, you can actually see, it will automatically melt the solder and it will go into place. I will make a video of, of uh, how, how I've done that and how, how this works. It sounds a bit hard, but believe me, it is extremely easy. I do it all the time. Like, um, like this last week, this uh, this client of mine, he sent me a, a HP laptop, DV6000. And uh, he, he needed reballing. And um, I got the laptop, but he told me it's been reflown before. 
so I got the laptop. I took we took out the motherboard and I've looked at the chip and it was it was something I knew it wouldn't it wasn't gonna work even mm-hmm. if it was gonna be rebuilt because the chip was just popcorn to the to death. Right. And uh, when a when a chip is popcorn, it means they overheated the chip. Why do you they call go- it popcorn? They've heated it more more than enough because the chip is only able to take up to two hundred and seventy um, Celsius, mm-hmm. which is around four hundred Fahrenheit. Okay. So if they go over two sixty, the chip is not designed to take that much heat anymore. It will popcorn the internals of the graphic chip or whatever chip they heated up the internals would would just pop out and that's what the phenomenon is called popcorn <laughs> so so when the chip is very hot and popcorn it also means the bottom of it the surface of the motherboard that has also popcorn so the surface of the motherboard is not even right. it will be like a like a mount, small mountains on the surface. Right. So even we reball it, it's still not going to work. Okay. So I said to him, well, you know, there's no point wasting my time to reball this. It's popcorn. It's not going to work. But we're going to have to offer you another motherboard already reballed. Okay. Now, um, at the time, I haven't, I didn't have any replacement motherboard for his model because his model is so popular. We've sold so. We've given so many out that we don't have any more. We can't get any more. But I've had a um, another motherboard, which is similar, but is actually made by Compaq. Mm-hmm. But so uh, we looked at it. It's the same thing, same design, Compaq HP, same thing, identical motherboard. Right. So we put that in, and then when we when the guy was going, uh, my guy was. Um, um, uh, going to put it back together, he called me and said, hey, um, where do you plug the webcam? Uh, and it didn't have a webcam connection. Uh, I was like, oh, man. But the space for it was there where you connect the webcam. There's no connector, but the space is there. Okay. So what do I do? I go to his old motherboard. I remove the connector using the infrared welder. And it comes up perfect, and then solder it on the compact one. Now you're just showing worked. off, man. Now you're just showing <laughs> off. <laughs> I'm not. I'm just saying the things you'll be able to do with this, and it's so easy, you know. No, no, really no. I didn't easy. mean to disrupt your story. I think I'm just saying this is awesome. So you re re soldered that to the new motherboard, and you were he was able to plug in the webcam, the ribbon, the cable, right? And yeah, because um, and it the webcam ribbon connector is not actually, it's just a USB. It's just a different type of USB right. connector. So you give it mini USB, and I took it from the old motherboard and soldered it into there. And it took, it took one minute. <laughs> and it worked um, perfectly. So the motherboard was capable of, of producing the video. It just didn't have yeah. the connector on there. No, the manufacturer didn't didn't put. You know, it comes with options. Do you want the one yeah, with webcam? Yeah. Do you want... So the the only reason why it wasn't show it, it couldn't show video is because the connector wasn't there. Otherwise, yeah, all the, all. It, the motherboard had all the capabilities of doing it. It had the capabilities. It just it didn't have the connector. It was originally from the manufacturer without the connector. Wow. So what I've done, I took the connector from the old motherboard, this older, and sold it on there. That's amazing. Um, That's awesome. Man. Same thing I do with the um, HDMI ports. Some, for example, some DV9000 motherboards, uh, they don't have HDMI uh, because it's an option if you want HDMI out. Mm-hmm. But space for it is there. And what about, what about so the I, case? Is there a uh, hole in the case for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the motherboard, there is a, the connectors are right there. The pads are right there. Mm-hmm. All you have to do is put the connector on, use the infrared, and it will melt the solder, and it will... It will stick there automatically, and then it will work. Wow. So the motherboards, laptop motherboards, have the capabilities. It's just they don't put the connectors. They put, they don't put the, uh, yeah, the connectors for you. So I put HDMI ports on DV9000s um, uh, or uh, sometimes, yeah, mostly HDMI ports uh, because the space is there. And then uh, on the plastic bit, because obviously because there is no HDMI port, the plastic bit, you just, I just um, 
it's actually pre-cut but it's like really thin plastic so you just push it and then you, it would become a proper hole for the hdmi port to come out from oh i see i it's like it's perforated kind of around the edge of it i know what you mean yeah yeah, that kind yeah of. i've seen that yeah so how, um, how yeah. could anybody use this machine if they bought it? Like, is there an instruction manual, or does it take years of practice, or what? Nah, nah, nah. It's that easy. Nothing at all. If if you're gonna use it for reballing, now that's a different question. That's yeah, it would take months and months of training. But to solder connectors on motherboards, and it's I, I think one day is all you need because the the, the basics of it is. The motherboard has to preheat. You see that uh, machine, if you have a look at the picture? Yeah. All it is is two parts. It has the bottom part, which is an oven heater or a plate heater, right. like your, your your kitchen one, like mm -hmm. your cooker at home, if right. you have an electric cooker. Okay. So that, that's the bottom heater. You always start with that first. You preheat the uh, motherboard. It has to be preheated, so it can be hot. It has to be preheated at around uh, 130 uh, Celsius, which is, I don't know, for Fahrenheit. Okay. Always, before you solder anything. And once you reach 130, then you can apply the top bit, which is the infrared light. And you can actually focus it on the exact area you want to be soldered. Okay. Very good. And cool. the, the rest flux. Flux space does all the work for you. You don't have to align them precisely. No. Flux aligns it for you precisely. It puts it right there where you want. That's amazing. All right. Yeah, I, I will I will make a, a video of some of the connectors we do. And it's, uh, yeah, it's for, for soldering, um, you know, uh, like uh, some a lot of our clients, they want to use the cheap way of sending just the motherboard to reball. They don't want to send the whole laptops. And also international clients who are in Italy, Spain, um, I, we can't allow them to send the whole laptop because it would cost a lot on shipping and also it's really risky. Uh, so we ask them just to send the motherboard and they don't have computer repair shops in there or anyone who is able to take it apart for them. So I made videos on how to take it apart, how to take their laptop apart. I see. So they can send the motherboard. Right. But you know, for the first time, they always, they force it, you know, they force a connector, mm -hmm. they force the, yeah. uh, so they, so the, so the bits comes off, the, and then uh, they email me, oh, you know, the, this came off, can you place it? I say, yeah, send me a picture of it. And then when they send me a picture, I always look at the most important is the pads on the motherboard. Uh, if they're all silver, there's no black holes. Mm -hmm. It's fine because the silver is the solder. It means it will right. melt and it will hook it up. Right, right, right. So I yeah, send it up, and um, it's one minute, one minute job to connect that back on. Wow, that's cool. So, but this is not the machine you used to do reballing. No, I used to, I used to, but uh, um, yeah, I mean, I used to use that one for reballing Xbox. But not you don't it, use it. You use a different machine now for reballing. Oh, for reballing. I mean, if it had only one option, if it had the laser pointer, uh, it would have been perfect for uh, laptops. But um, no, I mean, you can use it for reballing. Uh, there's for the reballing laptops. It's just for me. Um, I prefer my my Jovi one because it gives me a, a laser pointer, so I can point right in the middle of the graphics chip. Is this your third so wife? Is this, so is, this for, is this is this reballing is, machine? Is this your third wife? The one you're talking about now? <laughs> yeah. Well, we're allowed to have four. <laughs> I just, can't afford it. Yeah. That, no. Yeah. Uh, you don't have a picture of your reballing machine, do you? Or is that secret? No. I, um. I use the. Um, you can Google the picture. Uh, I use the uh, Jovi seven re seven thousand five hundred, RE seven thousand five hundred. Okay, the art that one said. I use for the laptops. Ah, the and uh, next year, I'm coming to America to buy the ultimate reballing machine for laptops. Really? In America, it's right there. What's it called? Uh, I have no. I don't. I don't. The, usually, the professional ones don't have like big names, but. Uh, 
I know I I at the top of my head can't remember, but it's something around. It's not that expensive though. It's twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> not that expensive. <laughs> where do they sell? Where do they sell it? Um, I I just you know I just looked at it in the listing. It's on eBay. You can find it on eBay. You gotta come and visit me if you're in my area. Even if you're not, you gotta come down here. I know. Yeah, I, right. I, I, I'm planning to. Yeah. All right. All right. I think it's actually close to your area. That's why, because I was checking flights and everything the last time. Um, uh, you, you're in um, you're in California, right? No, I'm in Florida. Florida, Florida. Yeah, I know Florida. Yeah, I know it's it's somewhere there. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean it's, it's it's on eBay. They're selling it on eBay. All right. And uh, it's the most expensive one on eBay. If you type reballing machine machine and the uh, highest price, you'll find it there. Twenty grand. Wow, it does the. Uh, I mean, remo it does one wonderful thing, which is really what we need. It sucks the solder out. It, it actually it has a, some sort of pump, and it, it it melts the solder and it sucks it. Hmm. So we don't have to use a soldering iron at all. It just magically sucks the solder. Huh. Neat. And that is. When I saw that, I said, that's it. This will solve all my problems. <laughs> well, but, you know, we have to save from now to make that money and yeah. come down and get it. Yeah, but that's the future. That's, that's what's coming up. Cool. Um, you got anything else you want to go yeah, over? Laptops. So laptops, they, um, they need laser pointer. And also uh, laptops need dark infrared. The, the one I showed you earlier, the Pahuti one, is actually traditional infrared which is okay for soldering, you know, this and that. But uh, the Jovi one uses dark infrared, which is uh, it's a German design um, thing where uh, it actually gives even heat temperatures, where the one we looked at it before, the old one, kind of gives more heat in the center and less heat in the edges. I see. So uh, the... The Jovi one is, is really, um, and also it gives you, um, the Jovi gives you connection to your laptop or computer and you can see the software running on it. Cool. Um, much more cool the features than, cool. uh, than the other one. But uh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, the, uh, yeah, but they're not really meant to, for reballing. They're really meant for uh, co sort of wireless soldering, the infrared soldering. And I think if you're a technician who does a lot of, uh, connectors and motherboard soldering and uh, removing uh, burned diodes and motherboards this is the perfect tool for it and especially now i mean the price five six seven hundred dollars you can you can get one is, is awesome sweet sounds good you got anything else you want to go over or should we go to emails you tell me um got... yeah um um yeah, I've had, um, for those of you repairing Macs, I've had a couple of Macs uh, coming in. And uh, the, the problem was um, um, MacBooks, laptop Macs. And they would uh, plug in the charger, and the green thing on the charger lights up. And then you press the power button, and it doesn't power on. Hmm. And... Uh, remove the battery, put the battery back, nothing happens, use just the charger on its own, nothing happens, use combinations on the screens, nothing happens. Uh, so what we've done is, um, it's sort of a classic, but it always turns out to be the top panel, which is uh, Max, Max, MacBooks, laptops. Uh, they all have a, a top panel, the keyboard and the power button is all linked together. That's the problem and, with it uh, because that's that's easily replaced. That's easily replaced. Yep. Um, all we've done is uh, to make sure it's that to really check it's that and not something else, not like a motherboard. We took the top panel off, and where the connector is, you know, there's one small connector that connects the whole thing to the motherboard. Yeah, right in the middle there, and it's probably what does the cable get broken because it's bent? It gets bent. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes it's the, yeah. I think one of them had liquid spill. Okay. The keyboard bit, so it probably shorted the whole thing. And the other one maybe, maybe cable bent. I don't know. But um, what we've done is we take the top panel off, 
and then we shot the connection on the motherboard and the laptop powered down straight away and it was working screen came on and everything wow so uh diagnosed it straight away top panel needs replacing so uh, next thing to do is uh, our friend ebay and uh, we uh, we got them from ebay pretty cheap you get them like 35 uh, bucks or so right 35 bucks yeah, yeah um there's the genuine one from apple you can buy from hong kong the genuine ones don't come in brand new condition they come in sort of used condition right and it's brand new ones, but they're not genuine. They're aftermarket. They work. And those do they work come good? brand new, shiny. But we actually don't buy the new ones. We buy genuine first because it's genuine. Mm -hmm. And second of all, when we buy brand new, the top panel is nice and clean and bright white, and the bottom of the laptop, because it's used, is sort of grayish. <laughs> So not a very good color match. <laughs> so, uh, so we always go for genuine. They're pretty cheap, you know, really cheap. Comparing to what we used to pay years ago, right. I, remember I used to pay 100 pounds for those, which is like $200. Now it's, it's cheap, really yeah. cheap, those top panels. I and remember I did an extensive eBay searching on for them two years ago. And I was getting them for like, I saw like 55, 35, but there's different grades of them, you know? And you got to watch yeah. out for those panels because some of them are the flawed panels, especially on the white MacBooks. They're flawed because they get dirty. And the newer one, then they turn that brown color. And the newer ones don't turn that brown color. It's, you know, they stay white. But um, there's, yeah, they're, they're, they're all, they were all over eBay. And, but I'm sure the price came down now. Yeah, no, that's the thing. Now they make them. They even make them. These uh, Chinese. They make them. Huh. It's a good market. So I, I just look at the part number because everything has parts number. I, this is what I like about Max. Every single thing has its part number. Right. So you can search for it easily and find it easy. Hmm. Um, and just look at the part number. Also, the ribbon color matters, I think. Some of them are gray ribbon. Some of them are brown ribbon. Some of them are red. So the ribbon color to match the same color is also important. Uh, okay. Good tip. Uh, also, backlit and non-backlit. So make sure that you, you get this saying if it's backlit it's not going to work with non-backlit and the inverse is right oh you're talking about like uh you're talking about like macbook pros and like the aluminum macbooks yeah. okay yeah gotcha um yeah those are the easy repairs another crazy repair i had um, yesterday was a, a guy came in with dc socket repair and i didn't do it the other guys did it for him and then he came back the next day and said, uh, oh, I uh, laptop powers on now. It charges, but there's nothing on the screen. It's black screen. And it was one of those really old Shiba satellites, those blue covered ones. And uh, the, my other guys didn't know what to do with it because they checked everything. They took it apart and put it back together like three times. Wait, what was the symptom again? I'm sorry. It, the laptop with power on, it stays on and there's nothing on the screen. And it doesn't power off. When you press the power on button to hold it, it doesn't power off. It, it will stay I'm, on. I'm guessing the... bad motherboard. Those things that used to have Pentium 4s, two giant fans. Yeah. The fans used to clog up. It would overheat and, and die. Yeah, I'm... yeah. But that's well, my prediction. This, I know those. This one had the one fan design, just one fan. Okay. So uh, they brought me the, the motherboard, and um, I've looked at it. First thing I do is... Um, uh, I checked the um, the fan is connected or not. Obviously, it was connected, mm -hmm. and and uh, I looked at uh, the distance between the uh, heatsink and the processor. And the only way to do is to, uh, for example, if I show you, this is the motherboard. I would flip it like that, and face it towards the light right. to see the distance between the processor and the uh, and the heatsink. And you obviously should not see any light, right? Yeah, that's the thing. And um, there was a lot of space. Ah. Although the, all the screws were pretty tight down, really? there was space. I couldn't understand it. So, so the screws were, were really, um, were really uh, tight. And um, so what I've done is uh, I've added copper shim to, uh, to make the space. And turned it on, and it came on straight away. Really? That's unbelievable. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but I think they have some sort of system where they recognize 
if the processor is not touching the heatsink, and then they won't give you any display. Very strange. That is strange. It's strange that the computer stayed on. Usually, it would just overheat and go off. But yeah, and it, and then it wouldn't power power off. You you press unless you take the the power charger adapter. off. It powers off. Very strange. That's a good tip. I yeah, hate I hate um, those things. Those things were tanks anyway. They were fast. Yeah, they were uh, fast, but they were just clunky. <laughs> yeah, but I hate those models. I I hate them a lot. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I've had my um. Also, I've had today um, the uh, Turkish bath. I've, I'm sure you've seen that. I, I I've seen it, but I haven't put it on the site yet. It's on my list of things to do. You want to tell us what that's all, all right. about? Yeah, well, a woman um, brought her laptop. It was an advent, and um, she her son spilled gravy on it, and it's just dead. It wouldn't power on. Nothing, no signs. Even if you plug the charger, it would not charge the battery. There's no lights coming on whatsoever. It's just dead. Just dead. So I looked at it. It was an advent, and I don't know if you have that brand there. No. But advent is. Um, is made for PC Word, and uh, not there's not a great deal of motherboards or parts or spares for it. Um, you can buy from like eBay and websites. Right. It's specific. It's not very known. So I, I um I mean I looked at it and I said okay what should we do? I said um, let me just take off the bottom panel just to see if the motherboard. Is something I could find to buy, and I've looked at it, and there's none of it, none like it. Okay. No replacement motherboards, and uh, then I, I usually, if I don't find the same motherboard, like using the model number or a serial number, I would just type a broad uh, keyword. I would, I would go on eBay and type "advent motherboard." Right. Then I would look at the pictures and try and match them. Right. So. So, because normally other models fit your model sometimes. Like, let's say if it's like a 7100, a 7700 uh, might fit it. Right. Sometimes they have the same design, just one more option or one less option. Sure. There was one, but it was sold as dead, as same thing, faulty. And it was a different model, but it, it was the same. The, the CPU was the same Intel, it was in the same. Uh, position the chipset was same position the RAM was it had set a hard drive so those things and it had the same shape from the picture so then but uh, so there was no motherboards for it then I'm thinking you know what shall I do should I give it back to her um, shall I? I said let me try and clean off and, and let me just try and clean off bits that I can see that maybe uh, so I got my cotton buds and alcohol and trying to clean off the bits that, that I could see and um, see damage or see the, the, the spill and the gravy, whatever it was. And it was still not powering on. Then I, I really didn't want to do anything. I just wanted to give it back to her. Then I just then I noticed I've actually taken the whole thing apart, taken the whole motherboard apart. I said, okay, fair enough. I've removed the motherboard, and let me try my uh, my way, my Turkish bath. So I tear it apart. Take out all the plastics, take out everything, take out all the CPU, I just bare bone motherboard, just the motherboard. And I go to um I go to the um sink, <laughs> hot water, and then I had my uh, dish dishwashing um, liquid fairy, we have fairy. Right. And brush and just use um and just um yeah, pour wa hot water on it. Use the Dish uh, washing um, solvent and uh, with the brush, soak the whole motherboard, and then pour ho put hot water on it again. Now wait a minute, you you say hot water? You boiled water for this, right? Yeah, sorry, boiled water. Yeah, boiled water. Not just hot water boiled, out of the tap. My, using my kettle, yeah. And what did you use? Any special kind of water? Uh, yeah, mineral water. Right. Okay, that's important. Yeah, right? it was mineral water. Boiled mineral water, okay. hot, 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 steamy. And you just poured um, it over the motherboard and scrubbed it? Just scrubbed it, yeah. Scrubbed it with the very liquid um, dishwashing um, thing. And, uh, yeah, then after that, um, usually I let it dry, but then I didn't. I used my, again, my, my wife, my second wife, <laughs> uh, 
just use the bottom heater because uh, it's like an oven, so it would yeah. oven it, so it would dry it quickly. And I ovened it at 140 degrees both sides, and then flipped it on the other side, and for, then for um, straight for away used the hair dryer quickly for five minutes, and then put the processor in there, put the, the everything back in there, plug the uh, charger, and it powered on. Wow. Now you said you you sent me a video on this. I'm going to include it in the laptop repair videos. So if anybody bought the laptop repair videos, check in about a week. I'll have a lot of these videos up there. He gave me three videos, and uh, but you do mention, and we should say this on this show, that's a last resort when you do something like this. This is not you, you don't just throw not common practice to just throw motherboards in the sinks of hot water. So make sure that this is only a last resort option, but and do it per your instructions. Heat that you got to heat the heck out of it. Make sure there's no moisture. Should people let it sit overnight, even? Yeah, I would recommend the longer you leave it, the better. Really, yeah, I, I right. recommend leave it outside your, your your shop or your house. I usually, when I had my shop, I hang it outside of the window. I put like a string on it. And <laughs> they hang from the outside. <laughs> the passing by, you see motherboard motherboards hang from the window. That's so great. That's it's, awesome. Uh, yeah, I I say you you know it. For me, it works probably. 50 out of, you know, 50, 50. For example, this one, it worked, it powered on. The only thing, the wireless doesn't work, but I don't know, I would have more time and have a look at that. The only thing that I noticed it didn't work was the wireless. Okay, well, you can, I guess you can't have everything, but still, that's that's not bad. At least he got yeah, his computer it's, back. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's bad. You know, uh, usually as long as there is no, uh, like, burns or... Uh, if some of the components are probably burned, you probably won't have any luck. But if the, because some motherboards are actually designed to withstand the uh, liquid spilled, okay. so they can go to the manufacturer or whatever and be treated the same way. They use these techniques. We'll just use the cheaper versions. They would actually put them in their own uh, formula, but they would use the same thing. This is how manufacturers do it. But um, not all, you know will work but as i said as a last result if you're about to buy another motherboard for it have a have a go you're gonna sure. throw it anyway right. you have nothing to do with it for me yeah that's what i do i like it all right we'll have that video up there soon all right let's let's hit some emails up what do you say yeah yeah okay here we go first email is from and then we got some voicemails too by the way uh first email is from brian 2k brian brian let's just call him brian he says, not too long ago, I accidentally spilled liquid on my... Hey, this might be Turkish bath. He goes, not long ago, I accidentally spilled liquid on my Dell Inspiron 1520 and quickly reacted to clean it up. However, the nearest computer store was closed, so I looked up on the net to see what to do to try and fix this. Where the spill occurred, uh, those letter keys tend to work. It's just the keys on the left which are acting up. My question is, it's kind of a lost cause if you happen to spill something on your laptop, or should I go to a computer repair store to try and fix it since it runs just half the keyboard either decides to work or not? Well, you know, what I would say is if something spills in your laptop, immediately pull the battery Take, pull the battery out, turn the laptop upside down, pull the battery out, unplug the AC adapter, and don't turn the thing on. Do not try to turn it on. That is, that's where the majority of spills really fry computers is when somebody spills it on it, they, they, they react in time, they turn it upside down, they, get every, they, they unplug everything, and then they try 10 minutes later. They, they get a towel, they wipe it up, they think everything's fine, then they try 10 minutes later to turn it on, and they fry the thing. If something spills in your laptop, um, it may have get in your motherboard. So you don't even want to take a chance of shorting that thing out. You got to take the thing apart. So if you're not savvy enough to take the thing apart, yeah, take it to your computer repair store. Say, just disassemble this and dry it, please. And if you don't want to do that, just you got to just put a, a hot air dryer on it or something and just dry it for a week. If you're not going to take it apart yourself, you got to let that thing sit for a week and make sure it's in a ventilated room and there's, you're blowing it with the hot, hot, the, an air dryer constantly and you're just drying the thing out as best you can. I mean, that's the only thing you can do. I just recommend taking it apart and just drying every piece, making sure every nook and cranny is dry 
then put it back together and see if it works. So it's not a lost cause. In your case, your keyboard is a lost cause there, uh, Brian. I would get a new keyboard for it, and I think you lucked out. You know, there still be, could be some liquid, that, and you're just lucky that it didn't get into the motherboard. But if all that happened is some keys aren't working, replace the keyboard, and you'll be okay. It's definitely not a lost cause. Keyboards are cheap. What do you think, Latfi? Any extra advice on that one? Yeah, I, I agree with you, Steve. Uh, on the keyboard thing, yeah, he, he has to get another keyboard. Uh, usually when the keyboard stops working right after the... Uh, Liquid spill, there is no way of repairing that uh, any way I know of, right. uh, except from replacing the whole keyboard. And they're pretty cheap anyway. You can find them mostly on eBay, uh, secondhand or brand new. Um, there's lots of keyboard replacements for laptops. And as you said, for the, uh, the rest of it, you got to sort of um, act as fast as possible. You got to, as you said, take it apart, have a look at the motherboard, see if you can find any like uh, white bits on the components. Uh, like it's it's almost like a like a dry toothpaste. Yes, corrosion looks something like that. And uh, you just get a cotton bud and alcohol isopropyl, and then just clean it off with alcohol. I know, and what, I know you, what I do. Really... I actually take a toothbrush. It's great for getting in little, little spots. So that... yeah, if it's uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that's the way to go. Yeah, cool. All right, this one is from Steve. He says, uh, about the Spooger tool. Timster talked about this in one of the episodes. About the Spooger tool. Uh, I used one that comes with an iP iPod replacement battery kit. You get two free ones with every battery. I'm sure the technician Spooger would, would also be a good tool to add to any text toolkit. I also like to keep a few old credit cards around and cut them in strips to hold open the plastic slits as I work around op the opening. Saves a hell... Uh, saves the hell out of your fingernails. That's from Steve-O. You know what a spooger is, right, Latvi? Yeah, I bought I bought those from eBay the other day, and um, I, I think I bent both of them. <laughs> oh, really? Because I tried to. I don't know. Maybe the ones I got are not really good quality. Uh, they're plasticky, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like I, I mean, uh, he talks about using a credit card, which I, which I also think is a good idea. Mm, yeah, credit card wouldn't be strong enough. I mean, I mean, I work on laptops, so yeah. um, so I think laptop casing is pretty strong when it's compressed um, uh, compression uh, fitting. So I actually did. I bent both of them trying to open laptops. I think it's mostly for screens. Yeah, definitely. But to open the whole casing of a laptop for me, kind of didn't work out. Okay. Well, you're you're an expert, so we should we should definitely heed your advice. This, this one's from Jerry. Come on. Yeah, this is <laughs> serious. This is from Jerry. He's actually in the chat room tonight. I, was, I don't know, Jerry. I've, I've never seen you in the Ustream chat, so thank you for coming on this in this one. Unless you're just lurking in the chat. Uh, Jerry says, uh, I, 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 I mentioned this before. Jerry loves to send me emails on the fly as the show live show is going. But this one's from a, actually a week ago. He says, Dev. Uh, Regarding dead pixels and stuck pixels, you can definitely rub out a stuck pixel. I just use my thumbnail with shipping plastic over the screen. It usually works for a while. I had one that I rubbed several times for a while, and eventually it, it fixed it, and the problem was solved. So that, I, okay, I never thought about using your thumbnail and shipping plastic. I'm always afraid I'm going to break my screen or make it worse, so... uh Thank you, Jerry, for letting us know that worked. I, I never had success personally removing stuck pixels. Do you do anything for stuck pixels or dead pixels, Latvi? Same as you, Steve. Yeah. They're looking for a, for a solution out there. Yeah. We'll try his way. Okay. We'll see how it works. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, haven't, I haven't had any uh, dead pixels experience yet. Um, I I, but, uh, I don't try dead pixels. I guess I tried once or twice, but I have a I have a green stuck pixel here on my monitor right now. I'm gonna try Jerry's uh, method tonight, so we'll see how that works. All right, this one's from John. He says, "Hey Steve, I've just been listening to Podnuts Daily number two sixty four, and uh, with uh, Podnuts Daily number two sixty four with the perennial problem of should you charge friends and family? I just thought I'd chip in my two cents on the issue. I got fed up with so-called friends and family taking advantage, so I've just started quoting Sherlock Holmes when he said, quote, My professional charges are upon a fixed scale. I do not vary them, save when I remit them all together. End quote. This gives me the choice of whether to charge or not. I can then make the decision whether they are a close enough friend to get a freebie or whether they are just a paying client. I have had an acquaintance remark he was rather surprised when I charged him full rate for a three-hour job 
But I countered this with, quote, would you go to your office and work for three hours for your boss for nothing? End quote. Well, neither... Uh, well, neither would I and my own, no, I shouldn't have been quoted there. He goes, well, neither would I and and I and my own boss, or wait, neither, <laughs> sorry, I'm totally messing this up. I'm sorry, John. He says, um, would you go to your office and work for three hours for your boss for nothing? Well, neither would I and my boss, meaning me, I'm self-employed, doesn't expect me to either. He had to agree and was happy to pay up. I think you were right when you said you have to weigh it up, but if the guy who is after a freebie is a type of friend who would give up their valuable skilled time for you for nothing at the drop of a hat, well, then, of course, I'm going to help them out. This old chestnut would make a good, great tech debate subject. You never know. I might even get around to signing up and doing a show with you. That's from Big John, who is Hex Peck in the chat room in the forum. Thank you, John. Yeah, friends and family is a touchy, touchy issue. I don't know. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't have too many friends that just come up and, and ask me... Well, I guess I can't say that. In the past, I You had. shouldn't charge family. I mean, yeah. for me, family, never. Yeah, I don't charge family. Friends, is, it really depends on how much of a friend this person is. <laughs> so Yeah, I mean, I think it depends. I mean, it, are you going to need that friend yourself <laughs> again one time? Right. You, know, you could swap service to service, something to something. Right, so. right. Yeah, you just have to weigh it out and see what's... What's the most survival thing for you in your life to do? <laughs> the decision to make there. Uh, this is from Pete. He says, hey, Steve, I had a Windows 7 infra repair, which turned out to be a bad motherboard. I replaced it, but I got the usual blue screen on reboot. I thought I'd try the IDE reset tool on the Ultimate Boot CD for Windows, not really expecting it to work as it only supports Windows XP. But it worked a treat on Windows 7. It saved me a reinstall. Thought other pod nutters ought to know. Cheers from Pete. Wow, the IDE reset tool in the Ultimate Boot Disk for Windows. I think it's called, um, it's got a name. I can't remember of it. I remember what it is, but it worked for Windows 7. Hey, good for you, Pete. I, I have not had much success with that tool, actually. I think it's called HDC Fix. I think it's the name of it. And uh, I think it had it worked only one time for me, and that was on XP. I never tried it on Windows 7. Do you do anything like that, Latfi? Uh, well, believe it or not, I've only started using UBCD since I heard about it on PodNuts. Um, um, I, I, you know, Steve, I'm stuck on rebooting the whole day. I rarely do this um, stuff worker. with XP and stuff. Yeah. But last time I used it, it was on, uh, on my actual gaming computer here. I was getting blue screen, and I used it to uh, run checks on the RAM, and it actually found uh, problems with the RAM, so I then identified which one is bad and removed it and replaced it. No, uh, but it I, think, I think I've, only, I've also used it for scanning hard drives, which is pretty great. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I haven't had much use of it yet. Yeah, UBC but, uh, for Windows handy. I mean, even if just to, to load a, an operating system from a CD drive, just run a live operating system, it's good for just doing that too. But it's got a lot of great tools on it. HTC Fix was the greatest tool I've ever in the world. If it if it worked every time, but for me it had, doesn't work every time. So it's I, and I think he's talking about HTC Fix. It is the IDE repair tool. So um, hey, if it it's worth a shot. It only takes a second to run it. So yeah, blue screens are, are mostly mostly um, because of hard drives, aren't they? I would first thing I see a blue screen. First thing I do is scan the hard drive for errors and try and repair errors or right. boot sectors. Check and then check if, is great and if the hard drive is fine, then I would try and re reinstall or reformat. Right. Also, the memory can also mm -hmm. cause the, the RAM. So I'll take one off and leave just one or swap them and see what happens. Exactly. All right, this is from Lenny. He says, Steve, I just listened to PodNuts Daily 269. I have a possible answer for Michael's problem with wild keyboard cursor on laptops. I have the same problem on some laptops with sensitive touchpads as my hands tend to brush against them. I solved it by disabling the touchpad when typing, if that is an option. If it's not an option, I just turn the touchpad completely off and use a mouse. That's from Lenny. Yeah, Lenny, I, I thought about that a little bit with this wild cursor error that, that um, Michael was having. But I, I, I just, I thought Michael would have told me or realized that he was actually touching the touchpad when he, had, when he said that problem. Maybe he just doesn't realize he's touching the touchpad. Or maybe the touchpad's so sensitive, it's just, uh, it's just, flaking or being flaking out getting a little flaky and when he's typing on the keyboard it might be a good idea to disable the touchpad and see what happens that's a good suggestion all right these are voicemails which i could have sworn i played already 
could have sworn I played these already. Um, I know that there was a couple voicemails I played that did not come through on the last episode or two of Podnuts. I, I went back and I fixed one. I need to fix another one. Um, I'm going to skip those voicemails for now because I think I played them already. Let's do this one from Robert, and then I'll play a couple voicemails that I know I didn't play. Hey, Steve, this was talked about on Podnuts Daily number 269. From what I read, Windows 7 does come with versions, all versions pre-installed. Here's a great article on how to convert a disk for universal use with a great utility. And it's from My Digital Life. The article's called Create Windows 7 Universal ISO with all edition selection on install with EI.CFG removal utility. All right, so if you, it's a long URL. If you guys want to go check out this article, go to mydigitallife.com, or no, mydigitallife.info, and just do a search for Create Windows 7 Universal ISO, and then you will get to this article. That's from uh, Bob. Hey, thanks a lot, Bob, for that. I appreciate it. All right, let me see if I can play some of these voicemails now, Lafayette. This is going to be um, kind of funky. I don't know if you're going to hear this. Let me see what's go- if I could do this here. All right, bear with me, guys. And here is our first voicemail. And Lafayette, you may or may not hear it. <clears throat> if you just hear silence, just wait till the silence is over. We'll get right back to you. Okay. Here we go. Hey, Steve. This is Adam Head with Tech Head PC. Uh, I just want to call and thank you for the uh, help with the... Uh, Suggestions from my side the last few days. Also, I have a few questions for you. Uh, I have a... Is that you, Latvi? Uh, I just want to call and thank you for the uh, help with the uh, suggestions from my side. So... All right, I had to hang up on Latvi. He was he was watching his U- listening to his U stream. Hey Steve, this is Adam Head with Tech Ed PC. <laughs> uh, I just want to call and thank you for the uh, help with the uh, suggestions from my site the last few days. And also, I had a quick question for you. I have a friend who called and said her laptop uh, screen is uh, getting dim. And then I told her, well, it's probably needs a new screen, you know, I'll take a look at it. And then she uh, emailed me back and said, well, actually, we noticed it's getting dim when they plug it into the wall. And then it's brighter when it's not plugged into the wall. You know, I just, that, that just struck me as strange. So I just wanted to get you guys' thoughts maybe on what your uh, first instincts might be. Uh, I have a not a whole lot of experience with laptop uh, screens, but I've uh, done a few uh, replacements, and I'm going to get more experience with it. But it just seems strange. It almost seems backwards that you know it would it would dim, you know, if it wasn't plugged in, just because they're trying to save battery life. So I'm not sure what's going on. My first hunch is still that the screen needs to be replaced, possibly. But just wanted to, before I got it, uh, do what you guys thought. So uh, thanks for everything you guys do in the show, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Yeah, that is kind of weird. That's very weird. Um, it goes dim when they plug it in, and when they unplug it, it gets bright. It's usually the opposite of that. What I'm guessing is that maybe the power settings, because you could adjust power settings from when the AC adapter is plugged in and when the AC adapter is not plugged in. You could adjust power settings and make them different. So uh, maybe the power settings for when the adapter is plugged in is set to dim the screen. I would just, I would go definitely go into power options and check. And uh, try to restore the defaults and just go from there. But also s- just check to see if the on AC power that the screen is set to go dim. If it's not that, maybe it's actually a, a power issue. Like the power jack could be flaky. Your AC adapter could be bad. Try a different AC adapter. That's you know uh, the right one for that computer. Try a different AC adapter. Um, try it without the battery in. Just try all different combinations of things. And, uh, and let me know how it goes with that. But that's my... My best guess. Let me call Latvi back real quick here, see if he's got anything to say on the matter. And in the meantime, we got um, we also have two more. Uh... That's my my best guess. Hey Latvi, you got to mute your Ustream if you can. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay. Did you hear that voicemail? Uh, mute. That's my my best guess. Hey Latvi, you got to mute your Ustream if you can. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. Did you hear that voicemail? Uh, okay, Steve, I'm with you. Okay. Um, what what would you suggest on that one? Power settings? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would uh, plug it, plug the uh, AC adapter, and then press function brightness up. You know where the um, there's a combination key on the keyboard to mm-hmm. to do the brightness up. Yeah. Because usually some laptops are set to remember those. So if you they try that, so yeah, have, have, have a go at that. Because okay. you, you, I don't think you can adjust the brightness from the uh, settings 
I'm not sure. But usually that's what I do. I would, because um, my laptop acts that way. I would plug in the uh, charger. Yeah. And then uh, the brightness goes um, uh, higher immediately. And I don't want that. I want the brightness to stay low when I plug in the charger. So I plug in the charger and press the function and arrow down in my uh, case. Or usually you have a, a logo there or sign there for the brightness. Right. And it's usually either function, which is FN, or control. If function doesn't do it, it'll be control. If not, then you haven't installed the... Um, some of the laptops require software, additional software to control the hotkeys, like we call them, right. to control the brightness and the wireless, to turn them on and off. You know, hotkeys straight away. So uh, did he say he just installed Windows 7? Yes. Windows 7, you can adjust the, the brightness in the power settings. All right. Pretty sure. So I would, I would, I would, yeah. As I said, I would try to plug in the charger, try the combination keys. If it still doesn't work, try and download the utility for hotkeys um, from the from the websites or utilities that relate to keys or settings, power settings, stuff like that. That would allow you to adjust the brightness and remember them. Okay. Cool. Um, this is from Door to Door Geek. This voicemail. Let's let's hear this one here. Hello, Steve. It's Door to Door Geek. I need everybody to go to www.hiren.info. It looks like Hiren's Boot CD went legit, and no more illegally copyrighted pirated software on the disc. Uh, this was posted in the forums. I perused the site and it definitely looks like they went legit i'm very happy to say this tool this disc is butt loaded with all kinds of stuff on there i was actually surprised and it had stuff like off crack or off crack installed it had kong boot on the disc as well so this now might be a perfectly legit disc that some techs don't have to hide anymore techs like me i didn't want to use it because it's utterly illegal. And it looks like they finally saw the light and went the right way. Uh, if I am mistaken, please, someone let me know. But if I'm right, I think we should all give this disc a chance uh, and let's show what kind of support that we can give it. All right, guys. Later. Hiren's Boots CD. Now, I know that Dor emailed me today and said, uh, scratch that because uh, Hiren's, uh, I think a lot of the software is legit on it now. But they still have a version of Tiny XP, which is just not a legal copy of Windows. So I think aside from that, well, I think they're getting on the right track, but I don't think they fully got everything together yet. So, Latvi, um, you know anything about Hiren's Boot CD? You know. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, Dor, if that if I'm I, I only use legit CDs. I only use the OEMs and the. Um... Gen and and the uh, yeah mostly OEMs and the retails to reboot everything. Yeah, well, this um, is this is like an ultimate boot CD. It has a bunch of tools on it, but it also, okay. but it used to have some like it used to have a Cronus on it and stuff like that, which is paid software. But you know they they it was hacked or, or whatever, um, and it has a version of Windows on this. It just happens to have Tiny XP on it, which uh, is not legit. So, but I mean All it right. probably might have a bunch of other good stuff. I don't know. I haven't I haven't checked it out yet, but this is what we hear. All right, guys. But you um, don't have to use the illegal one. You could use it for the legal ones, right? Yeah, you could use it for the legal ones, right? But I still, yeah. if they still have the illegal software, right? You don't, you don't really want to support them, kind of thing. But All right. We'll see. We'll see what's going on with that. All right, let's end off this show. What do you say, Latvi? You ready? Oh yeah. I really appreciate you coming on. Thanks for making it go right with your netbook there, and we got we got good audio quality and good video. So you made it go right, man. Thanks. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you. And uh, thanks for the listeners. Uh, just one last thing I've read in the chat room. Um, they were saying um, they saw infrared uh, welding for 350 bucks. Uh, everybody's buying those because they are cheap, but they are cheap for a reason. And that's because they don't cover up a whole big area. They will cover up a small area. Those are only ideal for repairing mobile phones like iPhone or but not something like a laptop or a, or, a, or a big area because they have a small lamp, and that's why they're cheap. They normally call T86 
or T8 6 plus plus and so be careful if you're buying it make sure the area you're going to use is not as big as a, a Xbox chip or, or, a, or a, a really big connector it's just small stuff that's all cool thanks for letting us know that that's it's good in case somebody's deciding to go out and buy buy a 350 dollar machine right now so there you go all right so Latvi our reballer has uh, uh, given us a lot of info today hope you guys can digest all that and then um, and use it in your computer repair lives that's going to be it for Podnuts Daily for today. We're going to see everybody next time.